we seem to have a bit of a problem with one of those container tomato plants and that's one of those cherry falls which is a bush variety and the thing is as you go through season if you see a problem with any of your plants you need to deal with that straight away because depending on what that problem is if you leave it it could be something that will spread to your other plants and then you've got an even bigger problem will do the first thing that you should do as soon as you notice a problem and that is isolate that plant away from everything else we've removed it from that container garden because that container garden has got potatoes in there and peppers and they're members of the same family as tomatoes which is the nightshade family so anything wrong with this plant can quite easily be passed on to all those so it could cause a major problem by not isolating it and we're not going to work on that plant in here either because this greenhouse is full of tomatoes. Let's take it outside. This is the plant that we've got a problem with. It's absolutely loaded with cherry tomatoes. Unfortunately, a lot of these leaves are starting to die back. They're turning yellow, they're wilting, and then ultimately they're going to die. So what we have to do is go through possibilities of what it could be to try and solve this problem on this particular plant and hopefully it's not the last thing we come across because if it is there's basically no cure but first I'll give you a more close-up look at this tomato plant so then you can see just how much fruit is on this particular plant and as I said before this is what's called a cherry falls so it's a determinate bush tomato doesn't grow much bigger than it has done not in this container at least but it's absolutely loaded with cherry tomatoes but at the same time there's a lot of leaves that are starting to drop and they feel like they're drying out whereas others seem perfectly healthy there's lots of foliage dying off on the bottom as well and it's a shame when you've got that much fruit pending on your plants because if this plant dies back those cherry tomatoes will never turn red so we'll not even get to harvest what we've grown so far when it comes to things like this my first thoughts are over watering because if you overwater any of your plants the leaves start to turn yellow it's a fine balance as you go through season because you're going to have really hot days, you're going to have humid days, you're going to have days where you get a bit of rain. So you've got to try and develop some kind of consistency in your watering and your feeding. Which brings it to another problem. It could be a nitrogen deficiency. That will also cause your leaves to yellow and start to wilt. Because there's too much of this plant. Nitrogen's a movable fertiliser. So this plant can take up nitrogen and distribute it to every part of the plant that needs it. But if there's not enough nitrogen, then certain parts are obviously going to miss out and suffer. But we feed these plants every 14 days, so I don't think that it's that. But once again, the flip side of that, if you fertilise your plants too much, that can also cause problems. This is where you've got to find that balance basically everything that you do and it can be quite difficult especially for first-time gardeners it could be something to do with airflow this is quite a bushy plant so airflow is really important to tomato plants for them to thrive and if not it causes quite a lot of humidity and that will lead to disease so it's always a good idea to try and trim off any branches that you can that's not really doing anything and try and create a bit of airflow within that plant obviously because it's a bush tomato there's going to be a lot of branches you can't take off because they're going to be bearing fruit but any that you find that are doing nothing just old leaves and branches it's a good idea to take those off things like this it's wilting it looks basically dead there's no point in leaving that on your plant and as we take these old branches off we need to put them somewhere so we can put them in a bag and put them in a bin because we don't yet know exactly what's wrong with this plant so even though 
you've isolated the plant you need to isolate anything you take away from it as well and because it's a bush variety we can take away some of the top branches but at the moment I'm going to concentrate on base and we'll just take those leaves away even though this one actually looks quite healthy apart from one thing which could also be another problem when you've got your tomato plants outside I'll just show you a little bit closer right there on the end of that leaf it's turned white that's sun scorch that's not a disease it's not something that's going to completely kill your plant it's because it's been outdoors we've had a little bit of rain and then the sun's come out it's got really hot and that's led to it scorching your leaves and you'll always notice that because it burns the edges of your leaves and it's always white not yellow so I'm just going to keep going around this plant taking off branches and as you go you're going to find some that look even much worse for wear that you couldn't see earlier because the plant's so bushy so you're leaving leaves like that on your plant and that's just going to attract disease even more if you look at that leaf there it's starting to curl it's starting to roll itself up that could be because the plant's got too hot and it's a natural reaction for a plant to roll its leaves up to protect itself from drying out as well as heat causing that it could also be that it's been attacked by insects that'll also cause the leaves to start and roll up the only way you're going to know that is by inspecting the plant look under all those leaves make sure there's no aphids white fly or red spider mites on there for now i'm going to trim this entire thing back it's not happy as it is and it's definitely not getting any better so i think the more of the foliage i cut away the better this plant's going to be and hopefully it's going to put more growth into the fruits that are already on it and i think then we'll stand a better chance are actually getting an harvest from this plant and I am taking some of these top leaves off they're not bearing fruit they're just leaves and I'm going to save one in particular so anywhere that hasn't got fruit we'll remove and I'll put to one side same time I'm going all around bottom as well clearing the main stem of this plant so it's got better airflow I'm also taking away any more side shoots that are appearing because we don't want this plant concentrating on fresh growth when it's struggling with the growth it's already got I've just took this branch off and it was right at the bottom and it's got flowers on it but they're not yet tomatoes so to help this plant along with the amount of fruit it's already got on it I'm taking those off so it's not trying to grow anymore the more we take off this plant at this stage the more sunlight it's going to get through to the tomatoes and the more chance they've got of ripening We all, however, do make mistakes sometimes. I cut the wrong branch, so be really careful when you're doing this. So, apart from that one mistake, we've got this plant pretty much cleaned up now. We've taken away a lot of dead foliage, dead or dying. But there's one that I saved at the beginning that I wanted to show you, which is a cause for concern and that's these ones they look like they've got early blight and if that's the problem with this plant there's pretty much nothing you can do about it except what we've just done but more importantly isolate it permanently away from all the other plants it will spread from tomatoes to peppers to aubergines and potatoes and I think 
this problem probably started because it's been near a potato plant that we had that recently we got rid of because it had early blight. So it shows you how it can jump from one plant to another. But now we've trimmed it, this plant looks a lot better. We've got lots of airflow at the base of this plant now. We've took away all that dead, dying foliage. And now you can see just how many fruits there is on this plant. And more importantly, they're getting a lot more sunlight. So what we need to do with this next is make sure it's not completely wet through. Make sure it's draining properly. And this area that we're sat in today is what we call the beer garden area. Just little shelter with seats in. So when we do get those little summer downpours, we can still sit outside we have to run all the way back down to house and then come all the way back up when it stops five minutes later. But for now, I'm using it as a plant hospital, especially for things like this, because it's very important to keep this plant away from everything else. But we're gonna test moisture of this soil as well. And I've got one of these. It tests as moisture and pH at the same time. And all you need to do is put them prongs into this soil. And that needle's gone up to halfway. Which tells you there's plenty of moisture in this soil. So it's not a case of it drying out, but it could be a case of it being underwatered at some point. But for now, that midway is perfect because this plant's just gone through a lot of stress from all that pruning that we've just done. But it's a necessary evil. There's no point in leaving branches on your plants that are starting to look a bit sick. Because if it's a disease, obviously it's going to spread. Check undersides of your leaves as well. Have a quick look. Because if there is aphids on your plant or anything else, you'll be able to see them. And then you can treat that accordingly. And one other thing that you could do is try and get this plant out of this container because it could be getting root bound. It's putting on such a lot of growth but we never know what's happening beneath this plant. And if your plant starts to get root bound, it's going to stress that plant out. But more importantly, it'll cause it to start dropping flowers so you won't get any fruit anyway. That is a last resort because tomato plants don't like the roots to be disturbed. But if you can get it out of a container quite easily, it's worth doing that to have a little check. And if you see lots and lots of roots all combined together at the bottom of that container, then it might be a good idea to just loosen those roots up and move it on into a bigger one. And then chances are your plant will spring back into life within a matter of days. So check your watering, whether it be overwatering, underwatering, check for insects that might be attacking that plant. You might as well remove all dead leaves because they're going to do no good to that plant in future. Don't water the tops of your plants while the sun's out because it's going to burn your leaves. And make sure you give it fertiliser at least every two weeks. But if you have the slightest suspicion that it could have early blight, the key thing to do in this situation is to move it as far away from everything in the garden as you possibly can. You still might get some fruit out of it, but you don't want to run risk of what's happening to this plant spreading to every other, especially when it can spread amongst three to four different varieties that you've probably already got. So, a quick inspection on your plant. It already looks a lot healthier for what we've done, and now we're going to keep it isolated in this plant hospital. And we'll come back to it in a few days, so if there's any improvement at all. Meanwhile, we'll get all this bagged and binned. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. Thanks for being part of this channel. I really appreciate it. And if you'd like to see what other topics we cover as we're going through summer, please hit that subscribe button, press that notifications bell, and we'll see you next time. Take care.